Hey guys, welcome to Learn Today IGCSE. This video is a tutorial for Physics Paper 4 Theory, wherein 4-3 for May June 2023 examinations. Question 1. Figure 1 1.1 shows a balloon filled with helium gas. The mass of the balloon is 120 kilograms. Question A. Calculate the weight of the balloon. Show your working. Weight is the force acting on an object due to gravitational acceleration. So, in order to calculate weight, we can use the formula weight equal to mass multiplied by the acceleration of free fall. The mass is already given here which is 120 kilograms. And as for the value of g, you can refer to the first page of the question where they will give you the acceleration of free fall. And you have to use 9.8 meters per second square. You will get a value of 1176 which is approximately 1200 and do not forget your unit Newton. Question B. The resultant force on the balloon is 54 newtons. Show that the acceleration of the balloon is 0 0.45 meters per second square. The formula to calculate force is equal to mass multiplied by the acceleration. You need to show that the value of acceleration is 0 0.45 meters per second square. Your force is 54 newtons and your mass is given in the first part of the question which is 120 kilograms. Rearrange your formula to get the value of A which is 0 0.45 meters per second square. And there you have it, 0 0.45 is proven. Question C. The balloon accelerates upwards from rest at 0 0.45 meters per second for 8 seconds. Calculate the velocity of the balloon after 8 seconds. Whenever you are given with a lot of information, your first step should always be to list down the known quantities. Next, you should have the ability to find the formula related to the values given. And here we will apply the formula of acceleration equals to final velocity minus initial velocity over time. Substitute the values and you will get velocity equals to 3.6 meters per second. Always do not forget to write your units. Question D. Calculate the distance traveled by the balloon in the first 8 seconds. We know that speed equals to distance over time. Meaning that using the value of speed given and the time given here, we can obtain distance. In this case, your balloon accelerated from an initial speed of 0 meters per second to 3.6 meters per second. This means that throughout the motion of the balloon, the speed was not constant. So we can just use the value of speed here equals to 3.6 meters per second. So you have to take the average speed here which is final speed minus initial speed divided by 2 and you will get 1.8 meters per second. You will get a distance of 14.4 meters which converted to two significant figures will give you 14 meters. Question 2. A. Part 1. Define pressure. Pressure is defined as the force applied per unit area. Part 2. Describe how pressure in a liquid varies with its depth and with its density. The pressure due to column of liquid can be calculated using the equation density multiplied by gravitational acceleration multiplied by change of height. This means that as your height increases, your pressure will also increase. And if your density increases, your pressure increases as well. So just write that as your answer. Question B. State two energy resources for which the sun is not the main source. These are some forms of energy that do not come from the sun. Question C. State and explain whether each of the following methods of electrical power generation is renewable. Power generation in a nuclear power station. For statement, you should just mention whether it is renewable or non-renewable. A nuclear power station comes from nuclear energy and a nuclear energy is non-renewable. 
The explanation is because one day all the nuclear fuel can be used up. Part 2. Power generation from waves in the sea. So, waves in the sea is a renewable source. This is because waves will always continue being produced by wind. Question 3A Part 1 State which state of matter, solid, liquid or gas has the greatest thermal expansion and which has the least? Thermal expansion occurs in solid, liquids and gases. Solid expands only slightly because the low energy molecules cannot overcome the intermolecular forces of attraction holding them together. Whereas gases expands the most because the high energy molecules have enough energy to completely overcome the intermolecular force of attraction holding them together. Part 2 Describe in terms of the motion and arrangement of particles the structure of solid and gases. Solids have their particles close together in a regular arrangement. There are strong forces of attraction between particles so they cannot move and they would just vibrate. Whereas gases particles have very weak forces of attraction so they are far apart and able to move quickly and randomly in all directions. Question B Part 1 defines specific heat capacity for two marks. Specific heat capacity is defined as the energy required per unit mass where you would get one mark and per unit temperature the second mark. Part 2. A student carries out an experiment to determine the specific heat capacity of a metal. A cylinder of the metal is heated by a 12 watt electrical heater. State the readings that the student takes. There is only one formula related to specific heat capacity, which is the change of energy equals to mass multiplied by specific heat capacity multiplied by the change of temperature. And in order to obtain the energy, we can use power multiplied by time. So, the readings that the student should be taking would be time, mass, and theta here, which is the difference of the final temperature and initial temperature. Question 4a. Figure 4.1 is an incomplete ray diagram showing an object O, a converging lens, and the principal axis. The focal points of the lens are each labeled F. Complete the ray diagram to draw the image formed by the lens. Label your image as I. Okay, as you can see in the figure 4.1, the reflected ray is already drawn out for you. But if you look at them, you will see that they are actually traveling away from each other. So these rays would not be intercepting to give us the image. However, if we extend the rays on this side, you will see that they intersect over here. So just draw an arrow like this and label your image I. Question 2. Circle three descriptions in the list which describes the image formed in one. In this case, the image is virtual because the light appears to meet when produced backwards over here. It is also magnified in another word enlarged. As you can see, it is bigger than the object. And the last description is this is upright since the image is formed on the same side of the principal axis. Question B Part 1 State the name for the defect of vision that can be corrected by a converging lens. Okay, converging lens can be used to correct long-sighted vision and diverging lenses can be used to correct short-sighted vision. Part 2 Describe how a converging lens corrects the defect in one. You may find it helpful to sketch a ray diagram. Okay. People who are long-sighted have eyes that are too small. This is because the focus point is behind the retina at the back of the eye. This means that they cannot see far away objects clearly. But this can be corrected by using a convex or a converging lens. How can this be done is that as you can see here, converging lens can reduce the focal length of the eye. 
so that the ray will converge and will focus on the retina. You can just sketch a simple diagram like this with labeling the converging lens and where the image is formed which is on the retina and provide a simple explanation. Question 5a. Two types of electromagnetic radiation are used in glass optical fibers for high-speed broadband. Part 1. State the type of electromagnetic radiation other than visible light which is used in glass optical fibers. Okay, referring to the notes that I have prepared, you will see that infrared is used in optical fibers. Part 2. Give two reasons why these two types of electromagnetic radiation are used in glass optical fibers for high-speed broadband. Unfortunately, this is not some kind of calculation questions where you can just put in the values and obtain your answer. You need to have a strong foundation and knowledge in Chapter 3 waves in order to answer this question. One of the two reasons is that glass is transparent to visible light and some infrared. And the second reason is visible light and some infrared can carry high rates of data transmission. Question B Part 1 The critical angle of the glass in an optical fiber is 45 degree. Calculate the refractive index of the glass. Firstly, state the critical angle equation. We need the refractive index of the glass N, so rearranging gives us 1 over sine C and this is how you will obtain 1 mark. Next, substitute in the values given. And you will get a value of N 1.41 and round it off to two significant figures which will give you 1.4. There is no any unit for refractive index, so you can just leave the answer like this. Question 2, Part 2 Figure 5.1 shows an optical fiber made of the glass described in part 1. On figure 5.1, draw carefully a ray of light in the fiber undergoing total internal reflection. Firstly, draw a ray that enters the optical fiber until it touches the glass, like this. And your first reflected ray will look like this. Make sure that the angle of incidence is roughly equal to the angle of reflection. This ray now can be extended to the end of the fiber. 